Oh, I didn't see you there. Sorry about that. Let's uh, move on to the last lesson. We're going to be in that final section, section 8.6. Oh, goody, goody. And let's go over there and see what that's all about. Now, before we were multiplying, dividing rational expressions, adding, subtracting rational expressions, and we were graphing rational functions. They were kind of graphing out like that. We had a nice little tool called Rady and all that kind of stuff. And now we're going to actually solve the rational equations. We have an equation here. We're going to be solving for x in the equations. Uh, we see that here. We see that down here and so forth. But there's uh, some nice ways to do that. Of course, a long time ago, like in fourth grade or something, you learned how to cross multiply. So when you come into something like this, you literally are going to cross multiply. Now, sometimes cross multiplying is, is a waste of time, but uh, in this case, it actually is, is pretty good. And so here we go. Uh, cross multiply. Now, don't do anything weird. Like, I've seen weird stuff before. I, I've seen people, like, they say they're cross multiplying, and they bring this guy up here, and they bring this guy down here, and all of a sudden, everything disappears, and you don't have an equation anymore. No, you're still going to have an equation after you cross multiply. So the, the, the idea here is to bring this guy up over here, leave him where he is, and then bring this guy up over here, leave him where he is, and then work the problem out. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have three times... 4x plus 5, I just brought this guy up to here, I'm going to multiply, equals 2, I still have an equal sign, I'm going to bring this guy up over here, and it's going to be 9 times x plus 1, of course. Alright, so we're just going to do a quick distribution, 3 times 4x is going to be 12x, 3 times 5 is going to be 15, and 9 times x is going to be 9x, 9 times 1 is going to be 9, and of course, uh, we're just going to bring the 9x over, that leaves us with, what, 3x, and bring the 15 over, leaves us with uh, negative 6, I believe, and so that's going to be x equals to negative 2, bingo, okay, we solve for x in this rational uh, equation, okay, that's all you got to do there. Let's go down here and look at this uh, little word problem, this, this, you're going to end up cross multiplying here as well. Well, let's see what it says, because sometimes people get mixed up with these little mixing problems, okay? So, it says here an alloy is formed by mixing two or more metals, sterling silver, I'm going to put sterling right here, sterling silver, is an alloy composed of 93% silver and 7.5% copper by weight. So, uh, understand that, that the percent copper, see I have the copper right here, the percent copper, I can't remember what copper is, is CO, CU, I'm just going to put COP, okay? Uh, equals to the total weight of the copper, COP, okay, over the total weight, okay, so total weight of the mixture, um, total weight, total weight, okay, and so that's what we're going to put right here, so I'm going to say that I have 7.5 over 100, 100 being the total, okay, so I have 7.5, that's my copper over 100, okay, that gives us the percent of copper, which is this guy right here, now why didn't I use this, because I want to use copper, I'm going to be adding silver. I don't want to know how much I want to end up with a certain amount of copper, okay? So it says jewelry silver. I'm going to put jewelry right here. Jewelry silver is composed of 80% silver and 20% copper by weight. Okay, now it tells us that we have 15 ounces of jewelry silver, okay? And I'm going to put an equal sign here, but it's not going to be equal just yet until I kind of mess with this side of it here, okay? Now it says we have 20% of this 15 ounce mixture, okay, 20% of that is copper, right? And the total amount is 15, isn't it? Okay, so now this obviously doesn't equal this. This is this is this is 20% uh, copper. This is 7.5% copper. So they're clearly not equal. However, the equal sign is there for a reason because I want to add something over here because it says how much pure silver should I mix with this 15 ounce mixture here to make the jewelry silver equal to the sterling silver. Okay, well, let's go ahead and figure that out, because I don't know how much it is, so I'm going to have to add something to that mixture, some amount to that mixture. I'm going to call that x, okay? At that point, I can go ahead and just cross multiply and, and solve for x. Okay, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to move this up over here, so we have, this gives us 7.5 times uh, 15 plus x, okay? That's going to give us here uh, 100 times, okay, so what is uh, 15 times 0 0.2? That would be 3, isn't it? So it's just going to be times 3, okay? Okay, 7.5 times 15 is 112.5, I think it is. Yeah, it is. And uh, this times uh, x, of course, is going to be 7.5x, all right? And equals to what? 300. All right, so let's go ahead and subtract this over. It's going to give us 7.5x equals to, is that 187.5, I think it is? Yeah. I'm going to divide by 7.5, so x equals 25. So what I'm going to have to do here, that's uh, ounces of silver. So I'm going to have to add 25 ounces of pure silver to this mixture 
to get the same amount of copper in. That just uh, that would be equal to this over here. Okay, see how that works? You got to set it up right, of course. But uh, after that point, after that, you just uh, cross multiply. All right, so let's move on down here. Sometimes we're going to use something called the LCD. Remember that guy, lowest common denominator or least common denominator. And so let's see how this is going to work out. Now, ooh, we have multiple choice. Ooh, I think it's that one. Wait, it's that one. Wait, 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 it's that one. No, it's not a guessing game. But let me show you how you can overcome some really, you know, fears of this stuff. Well, first off, we need a common denominator. And it really helps if you have a lowest common denominator. Okay, you don't have to have that. But in this case, it's not, it's not going to really be a, a huge issue. But what's our denominator going to be? So denominator is going to equal to what? Well, 4x, isn't it? So it's going to be 4x. So what do I have to multiply these guys to get that? Well, 4 over 4, right? What do I have to multiply this to get that common denominator, 4x? Well, x over x, right? And this one by 4 over 4, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to rewrite it over here. So I have 5 over x uh, plus, I'm going to leave a little space here, 7 over 4 uh, equals to, I'll leave a little space uh, equals to a negative, no, I, can, I don't need to leave a space here, so it's going to be negative 9 over x. Okay, now watch. Here we go, there. It's not magic, it's just, just simple math. So I need to multiply this guy by 4 over 4, right? That's times. And this one by x over x, right? That's times. So see, see your 4x and your 4x? There's right there. And this one by what? 4 over 4. That gives me 4x again. Now watch. Watch the little birdie. That times that is what? 20. Right? Plus what? That times that's 7x, isn't it? Okay? Equals to a negative what? 36. So far so good, right? Ooh, but what about the denominators? The thing is, I have 4x under each of those guys. Right? Okay, so does this even matter? Oh, it doesn't matter at all. Just cross those out. So we're just going to solve the top part here. I'm going to move this guy over. So it's going to be 7x equals to... Uh, negative 56, is that right? Divide by this and you get what? X equals negative 8. Ooh, I knew it. I knew it. It was negative 8 all along. Actually, I thought it was that, but you know, whatever. Okay, so there it is. So once you get that common denominator and you're just trying to solve for X, well, X is already up in the top part, so just get rid of the bottom part. I've seen people like mess around with this all day long. It's crazy, right? And there's your answer, right? So that's using an LCD. Let's see what else we have. Okay, so once again, we have another uh, rational equation here, and we need to find that lowest common denominator. So your LCD or your common denominator, I'm just going to put denominator right here, is going to be what? This times this, right? So it's going to be x times x minus 5. Now, I'm not going to multiply that out because I don't really need to. So what do we need to multiply this guy here, top and bottom, to get that lowest common denominator here? Well, that right there, right? So that's going to be top and bottom on this guy here. This one we have to multiply by what? X. And this one we have to multiply by what? X minus 5. Okay, so here we go. Ready? So on the top, for that one right here, I'm going to have X times X minus 5 over X times X minus 5 minus 8. It's going to be 8X, isn't it? Because I have to multiply this top and bottom by X to get this right here, right? And so it's going to be X then times X minus 5. Uh, equals to, now 3 is going to be multiplied by that guy, so it's going to be 3 times x minus 5 over x times x minus 5. Okay, at that point, we can uh, just go ahead and get rid of all this down here. We don't need it anymore, right? Because we're just solving for x. I don't need all this other garbage down here. So let's multiply this out and see what we got. So we have x squared minus 5x minus 8x equals to, we'll distribute this over here, we've got 3x minus 15 and get everything to one side, so it's going to be x squared. I have minus 5x minus 8x minus 13x. Subtract this over, it's going to be minus 16x. Add that over, it's going to be plus 15 equals to 0. That's an easy little bam bam here. No, um, you know, you have you have choices here. you got 1 and 15 or 3 and 5. But 3 and 5, I, I can't get a 16 out of that, but a 1 and 15 I can. So I'm going to have x here, x here. I have 1 here, 15 here, or 15 here, 1 here. It doesn't matter. This sign tells us they're either both going to be positive or both negative. That guy right there tells us they're both negative. So negative, negative. So then we use the zero, zero product rule, zero times zero is zero. So I'm going to set this equal to zero. I'm going to set that equal to zero, right? And then just solve it out. So up over here, 
So x equals to 1, right, and x equals to 15 as well. So there's my two answers. I have to have two answers here because I have a squared, right? That tells me I need two answers. All right, so lastly, we have uh, a problem maybe a little more intense, but uh, maybe not. We'll just go for it and see what happens. Um, what we have here is uh, the, just some denominators, and it looks like they're all different, right? So you could come in here and just get a common denominator and multiply these two by that number and these two by that number and these two by that number, and you'd have this horrible monster down here. Let's go ahead and factor this guy out first and see if we can maybe get a lowest common denominator. So let me just uh, rewrite this down here. We're going to factor this guy out. So we have uh, 6 over x minus 3 equals to 8x squared over, and I'm going to factor this. That's a quick little bam bam. So we have uh, x, x, 3, 3, and plus minus. Okay. Ooh, look. So we have an x minus 3 and an x minus 3, so I won't have to multiply this guy by x minus 3. I'll just have to multiply him by that one. Minus 4x over x plus 3. Three, okay, and I won't have to multiply this guy by anything except this right here. So we can eliminate a lot of the work by factoring this and finding that LCM and then ultimately to give us that uh, lowest common denominator. Well, obviously our denominator is going to be this guy here, right, or this right here, but when you multiply them back together, you get this right here. So what do I need to multiply this over here by? Well, x plus 3 and x plus 3, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 6 times x plus 3 over x minus 3 times x plus 3, which is what? This. Okay, so it's going to be x squared minus 9 equals to, I have 8x squared all over, multiply these two back, I'm going to put these back together again. So we have x squared minus 9 minus 4x all over x minus 3, right? x minus 3 because I need to multiply him by x minus 3 to get that common denominator. So that's going to be x plus 3 times x minus 3 on the bottom. So it's really what? x squared minus 9. Okay, so what happens here? Well, we have a common denominator now. I'm just trying to solve for x up here so we can get rid of those guys. So let's go ahead and multiply everything out and maybe get everything to one side and factor it or something like that. Okay, so we have 6x, that times that, and plus 18 equals to 8x squared minus, so we have 4x times x is 4x squared. And then we have a minus and minus, so it's going to be plus 4x times 3 is uh, 12x, right? Okay, so let me uh, combine like terms here. So we have 6x plus 18 equals to 4x squared. That takes care of those guys, right? Plus 12x, right? So I'm going to bring the 6x's over, and let me rewrite it over here. So we have 4x squared, right, plus, right, subtract the 6x's over. That gives me 6x x, right, and then I move the 18 over, it's going to be minus uh, 18 equals to 0. Okay, so let's, let's reduce this down. Let me divide by 2, which is a common term. So we have 2x squared plus 3x minus 9 equals to 0. And so that's going to be an easy little bam bam here, I think. So we have 2x and x, 2x times x is 2x squared. Uh, we're going to have to go with 3 and 3 here, not 1 and 9. 1 and 9, I can't I, I can't pull up a, a 3 out of that. So it's going to be 3 here, 3 here. Oh, look, 2 times 3 is 6, minus 3 is 3, right? So that works. All right, so this guy right here tells me that one's positive, one's negative. This guy right here tells me that the big one is positive. So he's, he's the big one. Why? Well, they're both equal, right? No, but when you multiply by that 2, he's the big one, right? So he's plus, he's minus. Okay. So let's go ahead and use the zero product rule. So I have 2x minus 3 equals to 0, and I also have x plus 3 equals to 0. So I add the 3 over and divide by 2. So it's going to be x equals to 3 divided by 2, or 1.5, and here subtract the 3 over x equals to negative 3. Okay. okay, so what did we do? We found a lowest common denominator, right? We found our multiples, and uh, so we got the lowest common denominator. Once we found that, I was able to get rid of the denominators. Like that's important is because it's going to get really messy in here if you try to try to solve this thing out using these guys. So once you get that common denominator and you properly worked on those numerators here, you can wipe out those guys and then just go ahead and solve it out at that point. And we worked it down, down, down. We factored it. I took a, took a 2 out. Now, I could have factored it with those numbers here, but I didn't want to. It's too much work for me. Um, so I divided by 2, simplified it down, uh, did a quick uh, factoring there. We called it the bam, bam. And then I solved it out, and I have my answer. Okay, so That's pretty much what this section is all about. And it was just two little short pages. So basically, you are 
solving rational equations and you just got to do the right thing. Just solve them out. Sometimes you cross multiply. Sometimes you find your denominators and and then uh, you know the proper numerators and so forth. But uh, all right, so that takes care of it. I think that takes care of the whole chapter. I believe. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap it up at this point. And I think we're good. And I'll see you guys in class. Right.